Yes! So it's not over there? What? You say <laughs> only here. Yes, it is right here. Only yeah, here. here. We well, might be able to hear it from over there, but you get a better seat it's here. True. I'm a loud person. <laughs> Shall we? Excellent, yes. Welcome to the Scald Circle, where you will hear tales uh, as told by, uh, I forgot my name, Minogin and Casimir is very sunny, ignore me. So, the first tale I shall be telling this day is called The Ass, the Table, and the Stick. It is from English folklore. Now, the challenge I offer to all of you is to try and figure out what the moral of this story is. Because I can't figure it out. Because it's an English folktale. You will find that English folktales don't seem to have morals. Now are you ready? Yes, anticipation, good. A long time ago, there was a little boy by the name of Jack. Now Jack and his father didn't quite get along. Jack was known for being a bit of a liar. And every time that Jack would lie, his father would take up his stick and beat him. And Jack didn't quite like this. So Jack ran away from home one day. And as he ran, and as he ran, he bumped into a little old woman. And the little old woman looked at him and went, What are you doing? And Jack was too out of breath in order to apologize. But she continued to look at him and noticed he had very kind eyes and went, Okay. Here's what we're going to do. You are going to work for me for one year. And after one year, I will give you your wages. Now I will also feed you for the time that you are here and get some meat on your bones for you look very skinny. And Jack went, okay, I'll help you. That's better than being with my father. So he worked for her for a year. And one day after a year, she took him out to her little shed. And in the shed was a donkey and she went, Okay, Jack, what you're going to do is whenever you need money, you see this donkey right here. Just pull on its ears. And Jack went, oh, okay, I guess I'll pull on the donkey's ears. And so he did. And he talked. And the donkey went, hey ho! And coins started to rain out from the donkey's mouth. And Jack was amazed and held out his hands as gold and silver filled his hands. And he went, oh! Thank you, very kind old woman. I will take this. I will go back to my father, and I will make him proud of me. Now, at this point in the story, it's very important to note that Jack was from one of the poorest families in the village. And he had a lady love, who was also one of the poorest families. So, when he went home, he, he wanted to, to get his father to approve of him marrying his lady love. Now, before he made it home, however, we are all familiar with how adventures work. You have a start of your adventure and your end point. You follow the little quest arrow until you get there. <laughs> however, before you do, you have to stop at an inn. That's what the stories say. So, Jack went to stop at an inn, and he wanted a room and food. And the innkeeper looked at him and went, You don't have any money. I'm not serving your kind here. And Jack went, uh, uh, okay, just wait one moment while I go out to your manger, okay? And the innkeeper went, oh, okay. And Jack went out of the inn. Now, Jack was acting very suspicious at this point. So the innkeeper followed along behind him, peering around corners and through the cracks in the stable door. Jack went into the manger, pulled on the donkey's ears, it went, hey ho, and coined filled his hands. Now, the innkeeper was amazed by this and went, Oh, I want this donkey for myself. I don't have to do as much work if I can just make money. So, that night, when Jack went to bed in the inn, the innkeeper crept down the stairs, went into the stables, took Jack's donkey, and then replaced it with a donkey that looked almost identical. Jack walked up the next day, stretched and went, Oh, this is going to be a good day. And then he went off on his way to his home. Now, at this point, he goes, Father, Father, I have money now. Can I go marry my lady love? And his father looks at him and goes, Oh, Jack, my boy, if you're lying again, things aren't going to be good for you. And Jack went, No, Father, no, I can prove it. And he grabbed his father by his sleeve and led him outside to the donkey. Now, Jack went, 
Okay, Father, this is a magical donkey. Are you ready? And his father went, no. But Jack <laughs> went on anyway. He tugged on the donkey's ears, and nothing happened. Jack tugged harder. The donkey went, hee-haw, but nothing happened. His father started to tap his foot and give that tisking noise that parents give when children are doing something wrong. And then Jack went, no, 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 I don't want to repeat this. He tugged harder on the donkey's ears. The donkey went, hee-haw, and the ears came off clean in his hands. And the donkey died. Now, Jack's father's just standing there going, oh, Jack, my boy, you've lied to me again. You know what happens when you lie. So he took up his stick and started to beat Jack. Jack didn't like this and ran away again, crying with tears down his face. And he ran and he ran until he ran straight into a door and knocked himself out cold. Now, the door cracked open slightly as the carpenter who lived there wanted to know what just ran into his door. And he saw the little knocked out boy. He gave him a little kick in the side to wake him up. And when he did, the carpenter went, you look like you're in bad times. Why don't you work for me for a year and then I'll reward you? And Jack went, okay, because that's what you do when you see a knocked out child. Now, at this point, they worked together for a year. And after a year happened, the carpenter took Jack into his workshop and went, you see this table? If you say table, set yourself. The most wondrous food and drink will appear on it. And then he went, table, set yourself. And it happened, so Jack knew he wasn't lying. Now, Jack put this big table on his back and hobbled all the way back home after he thanked the carpenter for his help. However, remember how adventures work. You have your start, your in, and then the end. So he went to the inn. And when he got there, he went, innkeeper, I like the best food that you have. And the innkeeper looked at him and went, oh, we only have ham and eggs today. And Jack went, ha, 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 ham and eggs, ham and eggs, that's peasant food. I don't need ham and eggs. Table, set yourself. And as promised, roasted chicken, goose, wines, mead, and other great things happened on that table. And Jack was very happy. And the innkeeper just looked at him going, what is this? And then Jack went to bed after eating his fill. Now, seeing such a magical table, the innkeeper really wanted it. So he snuck down in the middle of the night, took the table and replaced it with an identical table. Jack woke up the next day, stretched and went, oh, this is going to be a good day. And then went back home with the table he thought was his. Now, when he got home, he went, father, 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 could I now marry my lady love? I can keep her. And then his father went, Oh, you're back again. What lies do you have for me this time? And Jack went, no, father, no. I have a table that can produce food. Look, table, set yourself. And nothing happened. He went, table, set yourself. And nothing happened again. Jack's father shook his head and went, oh, Jack, you have lied to me again. He broke the table in half, took one of the legs of the table and started to beat Jack with it again. Jack was very upset once more, and he ran away until he almost fell into a river. Now, at that point, there was an old man trying to cross the river, doing the only way he knew how, by knocking over a large tree. And Jack went, okay, old man, I can help you knock over this tree. And he went back, and he went back, and then he charged into the tree until the tree fell over the river, and the old man hobbled over the tree and went, oh, thank you, my boy, here. And he broke a stick off of the tree. You can have this stick. If you go stick up and beat him, it will fly from your hand and beat your enemies. And Jack went, oh, 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 oh. I have some enemies. Thank you, old man. Now, he needed to go back home, but he stopped at the inn first. And Jack, being 11 years old, finally made the connection that stopping at the end, bad things happen. So he saw the innkeeper. The innkeeper looked at him with fear in his eyes. Jack went, oh ho ho, I have a stick. Stick up and beat him. And the stick flew from his hand and started to beat on the old man. Until finally, the innkeeper gave back his donkey and his table. Now, at this point, Jack was very satisfied with himself. Carried the donkey and the table back to his home and went, I have another enemy here, don't I? So he found his father and went, 
Oh, my boys, what are you doing back here again? And Jack went, oh, father, father, I have a gift for you. I have a gift. You see this stick? Stick up and beat him. And the stick flew from his hand and started to beat on his father. And his father went, no, Jack, no, stop. Stick up and beat him. And the stick continued to beat on his father until his father died. Now, at this point, Jack knew that he could marry his lady love. So he gathered all of the women in a square together where he was now very rich, being able to make his own money and produce his own food. And at this point, his lady love was also there. She went, can I marry you now, Jack? And Jack went, no, you are too poor for me. Go over there. And then she started to cry diamonds at having a broken heart. Now, at this point, all the other women lined themselves up, having heard this, and started to pull money out of their aprons and hold them out and went, Jack, look how much money I have. You can marry me. And Jack went, hmm, there are a lot of you. I have a selection process for this. Do you see the stick? Stick up and beat them. And the stick hit them all on the head until they were knocked out. Then Jack went around taking their money and then 